Christmas presents are exciting. Do you remember what you'd say is the best gift you've ever received at Christmas? I asked my kids this question, and here's what they said. My six-year-old loved her little talkie doll that could talk, blink, and not much else. It cost a whopping $110 after tax, and it lasted for a solid eight months before it found its way to the back of her closet. My nine-year-old said his favorite was the popular fantasy book series, six books in all, each getting progressively longer. The set cost $58 and lasted eight weeks before it lived its final dust-filled existence on a shelf. Now my tween loved the Brainy Putty collection. It cost $32 and lasted a measly eight days before it went to live in our carpet. Finally, my teenage son wanted the ultimate drone with a 4K camera. It cost the most and lasted the shortest amount of time. I'd like to say it lasted eight minutes, but no, it was eight seconds, which is only impressive in Bullway. As exciting as those gifts are, what if there was a gift at Christmas that was far better? In fact, so much better, that it makes these look like, well, toys. What if this gift was worth so much that no one could buy it for you, nor could you afford it? What if it was something of extreme value, like, say, life itself? And what if this gift was given through the birth of a baby who became our paid in full? That's the gift offered to all. It costs us nothing, him everything. It lasts just a bit longer than eight seconds, eight days, eight weeks, or even eight months. It lasts forever. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Welcome to worship this evening. We're glad that you're here. Uh, quick plug, if you're so inclined, we'd love to see you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. for our Christmas Day worship. And if you're really inclined, we'd love to see you the next day, Sunday morning, uh, just to... Remind you, Sunday morning we only have one service this Sunday at 9 a.m. So if you show up at 8.15, way too early. Go home. If you show up at 10.15, we're done. So go home. So I'll see you at 9. Sound good? All right, fantastic. Well, welcome to service tonight. Please stand and join me in our opening hymn. Oh, come all ye faithful.
left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
Well, once again, Merry Christmas. Christmas. I'm sure you'll hear it again from me tonight at some point. Uh, I also want to say thank you, right? Thank you for sharing some of your your, um, Christmas Eve with us this evening. All right, well, let's get into this. So this this Christmas season, we've been looking at, um, our series has been the movies of Christmas. And tonight we're going to take a look at the movie A Christmas Story. So who's seen this movie? Yeah, okay. The last time it was funny, about half hadn't. How can you not? It's like a 24-hour loop, right? Isn't it on Christmas Day or something like that? So, um, so it looks like most of you have seen it, but I'm going to give you a little recap just in case, and for those who haven't, here we go. Uh, so this movie, well, there's a lot of stuff in this movie, a lot of stuff that makes the movie great, right? The things you need for a good movie. You've got wild dogs. You've got two bullies that really get what's coming to them. Uh, you have a leg lamp. Every, money, every movie needs a good leg lamp, right? You've got to have that. Uh, you've got a flat tire, and then somebody's mouth getting washed out with soap, which is awesome. And then you have a tongue that gets frozen to a pole, right? So it's just a great movie. It's just an awesome movie. But the heart of the movie is really about a young boy named Ralphie, Ralphie Parker. And Ralphie is nine years old, and like most nine-year-olds, Ralphie loves Christmas. And what Ralphie wants most of all for Christmas is a Red Ryder BB gun. That's what he's shooting, shooting for, no pun intended, but that's what he wants, right? That's what he wants for Christmas, so he's working every angle he can. He, he's working on the teacher that maybe she can put in a good word for him with his parents. Uh, he's working on Santa Claus at the mall that Santa Claus can bring it. He's greasing up the wheels with his parents, you know, de- doing everything he can to possibly, hopefully, he'll get his Red Ryder BB gun. Well, let's tune in uh, Christmas morning at the Parker house and see how Christmas morning is going for Ralphie. Let's take a look. Wow, right? That's, that's an ouch for Christmas, I tell you what. Not really a Red Ryder BB gun, is it? No. Now, I've never received a pink bunny outfit for Christmas, but I kind of get where Ralphie's coming from, a little bit, a little bit. There was a, so growing up, I loved to play Cowboys. Right? I had my, had my, uh, my uh, holster on and my, my six-shooter running around the backyard with my friends and hopping the fences, um, you know, uh, swimming, you're right, because you got you got to cross the great river. You know, if you're a cowboy, that was we're just swimming in the summertime. But I love playing cowboys. And so one one Christmas, my grandmother sent me a Lone Ranger cowboy kit. It was awesome. It, I mean, it was so cool. It had everything you could want except it didn't have the hat, but it had the you know the kerchief that he wore. It had the uh, the mask, the the badge, the the holster, the gun, and of course the silver bullets. It was great. If if you're a six year old, you would have loved it. The problem was, I was 15, (laughs) right? So not exactly pink bunny pajamas, but I kind of get where Ralphie's coming from on this one. Maybe you get that too, right? Maybe you've had that that experience in your life, or maybe not, but maybe you can relate to this one. This seems to be a common theme on Christmas. So you head downstairs like Ralphie, and you're opening up your gifts, and it seems like every gift you're opening up is socks and underwear. Did that happen to you? Every gift, I'm like, how many pairs of socks and underwear do I need? Are you kidding me? As a kid, is that what I want to be you know, opening? I understand. 
I get it. Most of us here tonight are wearing, wearing socks and or underwear. I understand that. But that's not what you want to be opening up on Christmas Day, is it? And yet, that's what you get stuck with. And I think, I think that's just a lesson, right? That we don't always get everything we want at Christmas. We don't get everything we ask for. Sometimes, in fact, we, <laughs> we get the things we don't want at Christmas. That's kind of where Ralphie kind of falls into here. But let's check back into the Parker house and see if Christmas gets any better for Ralphie. Let's take a look. Right, Ralphie finally gets his Red Rider BB gun. Awesome. Now this one I can, I can really relate to. So growing up, it was me and my two brothers. I was the youngest, and so we were really little. And my, my two older brothers, they had GI Joes. And I really wanted, and remember the GI Joe? All right, yeah, and I, I really wanted my own GI Joe. So I asked for a GI Joe for Christmas, and we woke up, went down, or went down, single story house. We, we opened all the gifts, and no GI Joe. Nowhere to be found. But, in my family, the tradition was you open up the gifts under the tree first, and then you do the stockings. So we open up the gifts, no G.I. Joe, but then mom and dad hand out the stockings. And guess what was in the stocking? G.I. Joe, right? Ah, the world was complete. It was awesome. I had my own G.I. Joe. <coughs> Let me ask you something. You get what you want sometimes, you, you don't get what you want, you ask for things, you don't ask for things, whatever. But have you ever received a, a, a gift at, at Christmas um, oh, that you weren't expecting? Have you ever got a gift you weren't expecting? Yeah, I, I probably all have, right? Somebody give you something, oh, that's really nice. But I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a gift that is, that is so unexpected, right? That, that, is, that is so just, not even, not even a blip on a radar, right? It's, in fact, there's not even a radar for this. You, you, you can't see it coming, totally blindsided, and it ends up just being the, the most fabulous gift you ever got. Anybody had that? So, so I had that happen to me. So it was our, my wife and I, it was our first Christmas together, and uh, well, I got to give you a little background here. So I met my wife here on, our, on my internship, and we started dating. We dated for six weeks, and then we got engaged. I had three more months of my internship, so I, I did the three months. And then I left and went to California. That's where my first church was. So she stayed here, though, because uh, she was working when we weren't married. Um, so I, I was out in California for, I don't know, four or five months. And then I flew back in October. We got married. And then we headed back to, to California. So our, our relationship was pretty quick, right? Quite, quite the whirlwind, to say the least. So we didn't have a lot of time to talk about stuff. Hopefully we talk about the important stuff. Um, so anyway, I say that to set the scene. So here we are, our first Christmas, and we're opening the gifts to one another uh, that we gave to each other. And I open up one gift, and guess what it is? It is a remote control car. Now I know some of you are thinking, cool, right? Most of you are thinking, weird, 
but I always wanted one. Right, forever I wanted a remote control car since since I can remember that's all I wanted is a remote. I kept asking for a remote control car. Can I have a remote control? Never got one. Well, then you know you, you just get older and, and eventually kind of falls off the list and, and you forget about it. And and again, our, our whirlwind relationship, right? I'm sure I, I I hope we're talking about more important things than me wanting a remote control car. So I don't. I mean, I honestly don't remember saying that to Angie that I that I want one. So I don't know how she figured it out. I don't know if she read my mind or what. But there it was, a remote control car, and 31 years later, that is still one of my all-time favorite gifts, is that remote control car. It, it is awesome. And that's what Christmas is about. Not about remote control cars, but it's about the unexpected, undeserved gift of Jesus. Jesus is the gift that, that is so unexpected by this world, and trust me, so undeserved by this world, but the gift that we've all, all been given. Jesus, the Messiah, Jesus, the Son of God, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. For you, for me, he came not wrapped in, in bows and paper, but wrapped in the flesh and blood of our humanity. And he came for us. Jesus, he, he, he comes and he gives us the, the greatest, most meaningful gift we, we could ever hope for or imagine. Because in Jesus, we have the gift of Christmas that, that God knows what it's like to be us. That God knows what it's like to be human. In Jesus, the, God of, uh, the, the gift of Christmas, we have a God who knows what it's like to, to, to suffer. He knows sorrow. He knows, he knows our struggles. He knows hardships because he's been there. He's been here. In Jesus, the gift of Christmas, we have a God who is with us, right? Emmanuel, God with us. We have a God who loves us, who forgives us, a God who is for us at all times, in all ways. In Jesus, the God of Christmas, we, the gift of Christmas, we have a God who, who wants us to have life, real life, now, here in this world, and, and a God who wants us to have life with him forever. L let me read to you what Paul writes in his letter to the Romans. <clears throat> Paul writes this, he says, <clears throat> But the gift is not like the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of the one man, so the gift of Je is Jesus, the trespass, that's our sins. So if the many died by the trespass of the one man, that's Adam, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act, his death on the cross, resulted in justification and life for all people. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's some powerful, there's a lot in there, there's some powerful stuff in there. But I want to ask you something. I want you to think about this, and I, I just want you to be honest, honest with yourself. What is it, what is it that you want more than anything? Now, put aside the pink bunny pajamas, the remote control cars, the G.I. Joes, the computers, the iPads, the phones, the clothing, the jewelry, the to toys. Put all that away. I mean, really deep, deep down. Be honest. What is it? What is it that you want and that your heart of hearts want more than anything else? Don't we all want to know that our lives have meaning and purpose? Don't, don't we all, don't we all want to know that there's there's more to this life than just existing. And don't we all want to know that, that life, right? That, that, that this life is not the end. This life is not the last word. This, this life, yeah, there, there's some good things, but we also know there's some, there's some bad things, right? There, there, there's war, there's famine, there's pain, there's sickness, there's disease, there's death. Don't we want to know there's something coming that will redeem all of that? Don't we want to know that we have a God who loves us just as we are and cares for us. Don't we want to know that, that we have a God who, who forgives us, who has redeemed our past, present, and future. He's forgiven everything through his son Jesus who came, born Emmanuel with us and died on the cross and rose to new life that our sins would be forgiven. Everything that is in your past that you've done, that, where you've been, he's forgiven that. Whatever's got you entangled and messed up now, Jesus has forgiven that. Whatever happens in the future, 
The cross of Christ has forgiven all of that. Don't we want to know that truth and that reality? Don't we want to know that, that, that this life is meant to be lived fully? That, that Jesus came to give us a full and abundant life, not, not the cheap sham life that so many people in this world settle for, but I mean a real life that's only possible when we have a relationship with our God and our Savior. Don't we want to know that? And don't we want to know that there's a life coming, by God's grace through faith, that there is a life that is coming, that is better than you could ever imagine? Because in that life to come, there's no more sorrow. There is no more sickness. There is no suffering. And there is no death. Don't we want, isn't that what we want at the deepest core of ourselves? And that's what we receive. That is the gift of Christmas. That is the gift of Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us who came in flesh and blood for us, to be those things for us, to give those things for us, to us. That is what Christmas is. And he came for you. And he came for me. And he came for all of us. That's the beauty and the gift of Christmas. The most unexpected, and certainly the most undeserved gift of all. It's the gift that we all desperately need. And it's God's free gift to us to everyone. My prayer, my prayer for all of us tonight is that by God's grace, through faith in his son, we would receive that gift, the gift of Jesus, our Savior. And that's probably enough for tonight. Let's sing our hymn for this evening, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Most loving Father, in the strangeness, turmoil, and heartache of this year, we thank you for this night and for all it represents. Thank you for the hope you bestow, the peace you bring, the love you pour out, and the joy you give. We praise you most of all for Jesus, your word made flesh. May he light our way as the holy star lit the way for the wise men. Glory to God in the highest. Gracious Father, while we celebrate the birth of our Savior tonight, Remind us that the truth of Emmanuel, God with us, is our reality every day. Glory to God in the highest. Merciful Father, 
We praise you that the salvation you offer through your son, Jesus Christ, is for all people. And we lift up in particular tonight those who don't yet know or believe this joyous news. Glory to God in the highest. Almighty Father, like the angels and the shepherds on that first Christmas, may we proclaim with love and grace the, through our words and deeds the good news of Christ all year long. Glory to God in the highest. Amen. The miracle of Christmas is Emmanuel, God with us. That's the miracle we continue to celebrate in Holy Communion. That in, with, in, that in and with the bread and wine, we have the promise of the incarnate, crucified, and risen Christ. That we receive his true body and blood for the forgiveness of our sins and the strengthening of our faith. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and at his command and with his own words, we receive his testimony. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take and eat. This is my body. No. Let me fight this for a second here. There we go. Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, after, after supper, he took the cup. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. If you are communing using the kits today, this evening, we'll commune you first. If you're new with us tonight and you're using the kits, I just want to uh, tell you to kind of wiggle the tab, and it kind of releases that, that first tab there, and that gets out the wafer. And Jesus says, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Pull the second tab, and Jesus says, take and eat, or take and drink. This is my blood poured out for you for the forgiveness of all of your sins. If you are coming up for communion tonight, uh, we'll do two continuous lines on both sides. You'll come up through the front, receive communion here, uh, put your cups in the trays, and then head back to your seats. Uh, the, the ushers will uh, let you know when, it, when it's time for you to come up.
Please rise. And now may this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. As the ushers come forward, hopefully you've got your, uh, your candle. If you've got a glow stick tonight, it's pretty simple. You, you crack it, you shake it, and you're good to go. If you have a candle, uh, what we ask is that when the ushers come by, you tip the unlit one towards the lit one and let everybody light off uh, yours in there. So don't tip the lit ones. was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light that shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth.
we pray. Almighty God, tonight as we celebrate your Son, wrapped in cloths and in our humanity, for our salvation, draw us into the mystery of your love. Join our voices with the heavenly host, that we may sing of your glory. Fill us with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the magi, and the peace of the Christ child, your word made flesh, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As you take this, as you, well, let me say this. I guess the best way to say it is this. I don't know what you're going to get for Christmas. I don't know if you're going to end up with the pink bunny pajamas, uh, a G.I. Joe, a BB gun, or whatever. Maybe you won't get any of that stuff. I don't know. But I know this. You have already been given the greatest gift of all, a Savior, Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. So take that good news. Take the light of Christ out into this world and share it in this dark world that they too may know that a Savior has come for them as well. God's peace. And let's join in singing together, Joy to the World. Amen. Amen. Go share the light of Christ. Amen. Ah, come on. Go share the light of Christ. Amen. Amen. Have a Merry Christmas.